All right, what's up, guys? It is Monday night. I'm filming on the GoPro. That's why it looks shitty and it probably sounds bad. But I just want to do a quick update. I did the clutch safety switch the other day, wiretapped it, and then you heard it click in the last video, and I called it quits from there and had to do some other things. But today, somebody told me to wire brush the bad grounds, my brother and my dad. So you can see this is one of the, the engine ground right down here, which is horrible. It looked just like this one. So that's probably a good cause. And then the relocation of the batteries in the trunk, it actually sits right down in here in the fender. So as you can see, I uh, did this one right here. I actually relocated this one because it was here and then the bolt got stuck in and snapped. So I did a brand new one. It's nice and shiny metal, which is what you want. So maybe she'll fire it's a little late it's about 9 9 30 and it's got open headers right now so we'll see what happens we got brian and dean we just I, brian brought the bolt for smog pumps we put that on serpentine belts on i got the two grounds redone so now we're going to see if it fires if i undid this wire just to get the engine turned over and spread the oil we'll see what happens it could be a bust as always but we'll hit the jump box All right, expert seagull with the solenoid repair. Hopefully it'll work, we'll see. Woo. You lost it, sweet. Oh, it's right there. Oh my God, it's literally right there. I just can't grab, where'd it go? <laughs> Shit was right there. Well, once I take this off, I'll be able to find it. Still filming? Yeah, it's just yeah. losing bolts and shit. This is how you work on cars professionally, YouTube. You just gotta, you just gotta follow by me. This is finesse this, it. This is how, this is how you really do it. This is, you know, here. You hold the bolt this time, so I don't fucking lose it. All right, I just regrounded all that, fixed the bolt. All right, I stole a bolt from the box. I have no power. Oh, now it's connected. Uh. One more. Alright, what's up guys? It's Wednesday night. Uh, you'll see Tuesday just before this, so now we're on Wednesday. Seagull came over last night. We tried and tried to start the thing. He's going to come over tonight, supposedly. Hopefully he'll show up. Um, and we're going to try to keep trying to get this thing started. Uh, the solenoid keeps clicking. That's the problem. We don't know why. A lot of people say the battery could not be charged enough, so we're going to try to take the battery out of his car and try to fire it up. So, we'll get to that later in a little bit. But for right now, the axle on this car was switched, um, I believe, and the e-brake lines aren't in it. So we're gonna go and put the, uh, or parking brake, whatever you wanna call it. So I was able to get this drum off, let me get the light, using a uh, flywheel puller. So, what I gotta do is go and put this line in it. I stuck it in the back, it's right here. But I'm gonna take it out. I gotta take the whole shoes apart. Uh, I don't know why I put it in there. But the whole brake shoe has to come apart or whatever you wanna call it. I ended up taking off this drum and it's had seen its day. And even the drum brakes, they're all rusty and seen their day. Um, I would try to put the e-brake cable in there but it's not taut. So it probably has to have a tension adjuster somewhere on it. But at this point, you know what? My safety's on the line, and it's worth me just going and buying new drums, new brake shoes, new springs, new everything, and a new e-brake cable. So that being said, I'm going to go try to loosen the drum up on the other side while I have the flywheel puller. And then I'll borrow the brake tools from my dad and then replace the brakes because I've just been using pliers. It's doable, but it's a lot easier with the pliers. So, And my safety's on line, so why wouldn't I go and do the wheel cylinders? Um, the shoes, the springs. Oh, I know why. This bolt that I put in the other night, not even through the small pump. Oh. It's just from one side of the bracket to the other. So the belt's gotta come off. So let me see. Is that a half? Game in my beer. Mm.
Well, you gotta do product placement. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Corona Light like, sponsor me. I the camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, Corona Light like, sponsor me. We would be fast friends. You couldn't get Natty Ice to sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't even get fucking Polo and Spring to sponsor you. <laughs> we deleted the relocation of the battery. Moved the battery back to the engine bay. I bought new terminals at Walmart. I grounded it to the radiator support. Uh, just temporarily. And I put a new ignition switch in. The engine, I don't think it was the ignition switch. I think it was more the battery and the wire, the 12 feet of length. Um, that's probably losing resistance and corroded from the inside out. A lot of people are saying that on the forums. So I did this. Turned over. The belt slipped off. The smog pump was cocked. So I went and put the bolt in and I missed the small small pump completely and only hit the bracket. So that was my fault. So I fixed that. So now we're going to try to fire it up for the first time in 20 years and hopefully she'll run. I don't need to hold the clutch in. Alright, so right now we're checking just to make sure it has sparks. I'm just pulling out a plug and then we'll see. Just make sure everything else is working. Alright, so it's uh, Saturday. Um, we got the motor turnover last night from relocating the battery. The cap and rotor were bad, uh, so I replaced those today. Still didn't get spark. So we took uh, an old ignition coil from his Bronco, put it in there, and now we have spark. So I'm going to slap the spark plug in there. We're probably going to put some quick start in the air cleaner uh, and hopefully that'll get it going through the things. Whatever. So, stay tuned. What are you doing? I'm taking off this intake right now and just put a quick start right in the throttle body. Not sure how it's going to work since the math is down here. This is the piece here. It's getting there, you should get some fuel in the lines. What I'm thinking is what's happening is we checked it for spark, we're getting spark, but uh, the fuel pump's not clicking on, so it's either a dirty connection somewhere, or um, either way, it's not getting fuel, so it's gotta be something with a tank or something around there, so. All right, everybody, it is um, Wednesday night. So unfortunately, I've been busy the past couple days working on my truck, actually. Uh, so I never made an outro to the Getting the Mustang Started video, so this is the outro. <coughs> I kind of wanted to wait a little bit because there was a swap meet Sunday, so I wanted to show my swap meet finds. So the first swap meet find, if you look right here, is a BBK Catless H pipe. So it's BBK. There's no cats. If you do look, it does have the bungs for the O2 sensors, which is great, so I can still run my AFR gauge. So there's that, and then I also got uh, an authentic Hurst shifter. Um, because I believe my brother was telling me they stopped the patent a couple years ago. So anything now you, you get from like LMR, supposedly Japanese remake or eBay or all that. So I have the authentic one um, back from the late 80s, early 90s, which is great. I'm going to put that in the car once it's actually running. And then speaking about the gauges, I'll be making a video on that sooner than later. On how to install gauges. I have water, pressure, uh, water temperature, tachometer, and air fuel ratio. So, I'll be putting those in for now. Tonight, I'm going to go put this in. Quick update on the same video. What the hell? The cats are out. So, the H-pipe, the stock one's out. The hangers broke off. I'm going to take the O2 sensors out of it. Put them in this one so I can run my gauges. And I'm going to slap this one in. And scrap that one and get the scrap price for the cats. So, go. I got both O2 sensors in. 22 millimeter wrench. Or you can use the O2 socket. It's easier if you do them out of the car when you're switching pipes. 
Now, you definitely want to put these in or weld the pipes closed. You don't want the air hole leak. It sounds horrible and it's not worth your time. Even if you don't have the wires on these and you just use them as plugs to plug up the holes, it's totally worth it. So you want to do that? Now I'm going to slap it in there. It's got the two hangers here and then the uh, EVAP hose goes in here. So we're going to put that up now. But anyways, thank you for watching the video. The Mustang is running. There is a fuel pump issue. We will be working on that this week. Um, I got a wiring diagram. The fuel pump's not getting power, so it can't idle. But it runs off quick start. So once I figure that out, I'll definitely be filming that. So again, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, guys, and stay tuned for more.